Hey guys, I'm here with another Python tutorial for you all. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple bouncing ball program, and this is going to be using the graphics window. Um, basically, this is a great program for new beginners. Um, it's easy to implement this into simple games and stuff that people would want to use later. So let's get into it. So we're going to start by importing the graphics file. And I'll drop the link to this in the description. So we're going to import graphics, then we're going to create our window. Then we're going to give it the title bouncing ball, give it some coordinates. I usually like to go like 800, 600. And then after that, we're going to um, assign a radius to a variable. Um, so we're going to do the variable radius, and then we're going to have that equal 10. And I'll explain this later why we do that instead of just typing in 10 in the radius spot for the ball. But we're going to create our ball, give it a circle, and then the point, and then we're going to just do half of the window where we want the circle to start and then we'll give it the radius that we just defined in the line before after that we're gonna draw the ball to the window and there's our ball right there so now that we've done that I'm gonna come back to this and I'll show you guys what it will look like when the ball is moving so we can do a quick just I can show you guys what this will look like um, we're going to use the time.sleep method in this um, just because if you're running it on Windows, it'll just run so fast that you won't be able to see where the ball like actually moves. You'll see where it ends up. So I'll just do time.sleep for there and ball.move11. One, one, and that's the DX and DY, and we'll talk about that more a little bit later. So as you can see, it just blipped along the screen right there. Um, so basically, that's basically all we're doing. We're just moving the ball the DX and DY direction. So then what we're going to do, we're going to actually assign dx and dy. I'm just going to equal them to 1. That's usually pretty standard for these things. And then we're going to make, um, basically we're going to make a ceiling, a floor, and then do the same thing for the x values too. And that way it's just a lot easier to um, visualize actually where the ball is hitting and when to change the direction of the ball. So first we're going to define the y floor. And that's just going to equal the radius. So basically the radius of the ball so the distance between the ball and this the floor is going to be you know 10 so i'll explain that more later and then we're going to have the x floor there are the y ceiling and that's going to equal the window dot get height so it's going to be the height of the window so that's going to be 600 and then minus the radius and so that's going to be basically the same thing, except that you're adding in 600, which is the height of the window. And then we're going to do the x floor, and that's just going to equal the radius as well. And then the y or the x ceiling, which is going to equal the wind I get width minus that radius as well. So once we have those, we're good to start our actual movement of the ball. So I'll make a while statement. And this is going to keep looping through until either it equals false or you break it or something like that. So we'll do while true, ball.move, pass in the dx and dy. And then we're going to do if ball.getCenter.getY is less than or equal to the y floor. So that's the one we defined right here where it's just the radius. And that way you don't have to account for the radius in this equation right here. You could do ball.getY minus radius, but I just think it's easier putting it up there. So if you do less than or equal to the Y floor or ball.getCenter.getY is greater than or equal to the Y ceiling. So basically that's going to account for both of the Y's. And so either when it hits the floor or the ceiling of the Y values, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do dy equals negative dy. And that's basically just going to reverse the, the y velocity and send it the other way. And then we're going to do the same. So we're going to do an elif statement where you're going to account for the x floor and ceiling. So ball.getCenter.getx is less than or equal to the x floor or the ball.getCenter.getx is greater than or equal to the x ceiling. And that's going to do the same thing, except we're going to do dx equals negative dx. And so with that, I believe that's all we need to do. I might add in a time.sleep just because I'm on Windows. And then 
We'll actually do just that. And so you can see it a little bit better. So I'll show it to you guys. And there it is. As you can see, it's hitting all the sides pretty well. And that's doing exactly what we wanted it to do. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed that quick tutorial. Um, we'll see you next time.